Yeah, Antarctica. It's an awesome place to sail to. It's also extremely challenging and inherently dangerous. But the scenery is stunning, the wildlife is amazing, and the climate is unforgiving. I got to Antarctica as part of an indirect circumnavigation of the Americas. It started in France, where I bought my boat. And tonight, I am going to be talking about the part in Yo from Chihuahua, Argentina, to Antarctica, and to South Africa. My boat is specially designed for high latitude sailing. It was particularly designed and built to sail to Antarctica. The, there are about, I believe there are 25 of these made. A few of them do charters to Antarctica and charter out of Greenland. The first one of these, they wintered over in Antarctica one year. It's a 50 foot boat, all steel construction, very strongly made, continuously welded on the inside and out. But what's really unusual about this boat is that all the ballast is in the centerboard, so there's four and a half tons of lead there. And so when the centerboard is down and locked in place, you can sail, you got a 10 and a half foot draft. When you want to get into someplace shallow, you can motor and with the centerboard up, and the draft is more than four feet, less than five feet. And this is how she looks out of the water. Another thing about this design is the shape of the hull is designed so that if you get trapped in the ice, instead of being crushed by the ice, there's a tendency for the hull to be pushed up by the, by the force of the ice. And, and being able to retract the centerboard gives the ice less to grab, so it makes it more likely that you'll be pushed up. To get to Antarctica, you've got to get across the Drake Passage. Uh, this is roughly 600 miles, and it's the stormiest seas in the world. All the weather systems go from, from west to east around the world. And here, they tend to get deflected by the, the Andes Mountains and by the Antarctic Mountains and forced into this relatively narrow gap. All the sailboats that charter out to Antarctica, from, and they all charter from here, they all have stories about being knocked down to horizontal or worse. It's, it's, it's a real place. So after saying all that about how rough the Drake Passage is, the wind was actually never over 25 knots when I crossed it. And this was just sheer luck. I, I spoke to a, a passing crew, Antarctic cruise ship on the VHF, and he said, I hope you guys are loving this because the Drake is never like this. And we were about 500 miles south of South America when we started seeing icebergs. And icebergs are just absolutely awesome to look at. As you probably know, 80 to 90 percent of the iceberg is actually underwater, and you don't know what the shape is of the iceberg underwater. It can it can turn over at any time, or pieces can break off. So you really have to stay a safe distance away, and because you don't know what it looks like underneath, it's very difficult to quantify what a safe distance away is. They're beautiful to look at. You don't want to be around one when it's actually breaking up or turning. Our first stop in Antarctica was Deception Island. And Deception Island is well named because it's not really an island, it's actually a volcano. And it's not just a volcano, it's an active volcano. And what you do is, there's a really narrow entrance here called Neptune's Bellows, and you sail into the crater of the active volcano and you anchor. You, you see the steam coming off the beach. This is the, where penguins go for a steam bath, the, the heat of the volcano melts all the, the ice in the water, and that the sand, the black sand, you can walk on that in bare feet for less than a minute, and, and then it's just too hot. You've got to get yourself into the, into the water to cool your feet off. It's, it's that warm. And if you see pictures of people swimming in Antarctica, this is where they do it, and they do it within a meter or two of the beach because the water gets cold quite quickly as you get away from the beach. Tillman dragged anchor here in a gale, and we seem to follow his example. We've been here for a day, and then all of a sudden the wind picked up to a gale force, and the anchor that had been holding dragged and decided it was best just to sail out. So after dragging anchor 
in a gale, we sail out, and it's nothing but a pleasant fresh breeze outside, which is another common thing about Deception Island in that the wind is higher inside the crater of the volcano than it is outside. Go figure. This, this is the mechanic sh shop at the Argentinian base. This is an elephant seal, and he is not dead. He is just enjoying this wonderful, pleasant day in Antarctica, and he's just lazing around on the beach. <laughs> Cape Town's a major port, so there's lots of shipping traffic. We crossed the continental shelf at night, and the wind started picking up shortly after sunset. And I don't have an anemometer, so I don't know how, how, how strong the wind was, but all the tops were blown off the waves. It was difficult to see uh, due to all the spray. So it was windy. And I'm on deck trying to figure out where all the ships are so I can, I'm sailing downwind uh, just to stay out of the, the way of the ships because they're, they're not going to see my lights. They're just two mile visibility lights. They're not, they, it's, it's, they're going to have a hard time seeing me. I'm just looking for all the ships, trying to keep adjusting my course. And the waves are getting bigger. There's all this spray in the air. And then I just see this wall of water. And it's heading straight for me on the quarter. And I, just, I got no chance to get it below. So I just grab onto a stanchion, put my head down. And this wave comes right over the top of me, over top of the cockpit. Fills the cockpit. Comes right down the neck of my one-piece suit. Water pours down my neck, totally drenching me. As the water drains and is shaken out of the cock, and it was just one wave, gallons of water are just pouring out of my pants where they reach the boots. And I'm coming from, from Antarctica, and I'm waiting. When is the shock of the cold water going to hit me? And then I realized, 